2016, the hottest year on record ever. While some countries felt the direct threat of climate change, the Paris Climate Agreement became the fastest UN treaty ever to enter into force. 2016, yet another year of challenges for the UN, with the Syria conflict in its sixth year. A polarised Security Council and other protracted conflicts, the UN tried to ease the plight of refugees and the ones left behind. By the end of the year, a quarter of a million people were trapped in Aleppo, while Syrian government forces and their allies bombed rebel strongholds. Peace talks seemed to lead nowhere, not even to a humanitarian pause in the shelling. The World Food Programme and its partners sent supplies to more than four million people inside Syria, even to hard-to-reach areas. Yet there's been little access to Aleppo since July. An estimated 100,000 children still live in the city, where walking to school can be a traumatising journey. At the opening of the General Assembly, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon held member states accountable for the tragedy. Powerful patrons that keep feeding the war machine also have blood on their hands. Present in this hall today are representatives of governments that have ignored, facilitated, funded, participated in or even planned and carried out atrocities inflicted by all sides of Syrian conflict against Syrian civilians. The Security Council stayed paralysed. Veto after veto blocked every resolution to end the war. UK Ambassador Matthew Rycroft. Russia has vetoed time and again to prevent the Security Council from finding the unity necessary to end this war. And so I ask again, Mr President, what will it take? Russian Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin. Если западные коллеги действительно так обеспокоены положением мирных жителей Восточного Алепа, да и всей Сирии, то в первую очередь им надо предпринять реальные практические шаги, прекратить поддерживать террористов и снять односторонние санкции. In Aleppo and elsewhere, even hospitals became targets of indiscriminate bomb attacks. Médecins Sans Frontières chief Joanne Liu. Make your resolution operational. Stop bombing hospital. Stop bombing health workers. Stop bombing patients. In mid-December, the siege of Aleppo ended when the Syrian military stopped the bombardment and the insurgents agreed to withdraw. And finally, agreement in the Security Council over Aleppo with a resolution to protect desperate civilians evacuating the shattered city while UN monitors watch over them. Similar images in Iraq. Government forces are fighting to drive ISIS militants from their last stronghold in Mosul. Half a million civilians in the city face bombings and catastrophic water shortages. Thousands were able to escape, seeking shelter in freezing temperatures. The UN's refugee agency rushed to set up six new camps in the desert, preparing for a massive new wave of displacement. Refugees the defining crisis of the year. More than 65 million people were on the move, five million more than last year. Most of them fled war and terror. Other refugees fled from economic struggle or climate change. Smugglers piled up passengers in their boats to cross the Mediterranean, where more than 4,500 people lost their lives this year. As some voters in Europe and the US showed signs of anxiety and xenophobia, Ordinary citizens and communities in many countries came to the rescue of refugees and offered them a warm welcome. In Vienna, a restaurant opened where locals and refugees cooked together and learned from each other, building bridges instead of walls. For the first time, refugees participated in the Olympics with their own team. One year ago, Yustra Mardini pulled a sinking boat to safety. Now she competed in freestyle swimming. In September, she addressed a refugee summit at the UN in New York. I want to help change people's perceptions of what a refugee is. For everyone to understand it is not a choice to flee from your home. And that refugees are normal people who can achieve great things if given the opportunity. 
U.S. President Barack Obama. This crisis is a test of our common humanity. Whether we give in to suspicion and fear and build walls or whether we see ourselves in another. Globally, more than 128 million people are affected by conflict, displacement and natural disasters. The first ever humanitarian summit in Istanbul focused on chronic vulnerabilities, urging a shift from delivering aid to ending need. Looking ahead, the UN is appealing for a record amount of $22.2 billion for its humanitarian operations in 2017 to help 93 million people in 33 countries. UN Emergency Relief Coordinator Stephen O'Brien. More and more people are trapped in a cycle of vulnerability and need. Protracted conflicts last longer, sometimes decades, as political solutions are nowhere to be found. Largest African aid crisis in Nigeria. A combination of drought and Boko Haram terror attacks led to a severe food shortage, prompting the UN Humanitarian Agency to call for a $1 billion emergency appeal. More than 100,000 children are treated in UNICEF's therapeutic feeding programs. Baby Umara arrived with acute malnutrition. After three weeks of high-calorie peanut paste, he's laughing and playing again. War-torn Yemen is also running out of food. Millions of people are starving, especially in remote areas. The World Food Programme had to split rations to reach six million people every month but resources are beginning to run out. Meanwhile, the UN envoy continues with his attempts at bringing the warring factions together. In South Sudan, ethnically motivated killings, hate speech and incitement of violence led to growing concern where the country was heading. Adama Dieng, the Secretary General's special advisor on the prevention of genocide. Conversation with all actors have confirmed that what began as a political conflict has transformed into what could become, what could become an outright ethnic war. More than a million people have fled to neighboring countries. Some 200,000 found shelter in UN peacekeeping bases. Women and children are bearing the brunt. Rape is often used as a weapon of war. Special Representative on Sexual Violence and Conflict, Zainab Bangura. Sexual violence is still the only crime that stigmatizes the victim rather than the perpetrator. As sexual exploitation also continued to plague the reputation of peacekeepers, progress has been made on key initiatives, like setting up court-martials in situ and a victim's assistance fund. Deadliest mission in Mali. In their struggle to ensure the safety of civilians and identify terrorist hideouts, more than 30 peacekeepers have been killed this year, more than in any other UN peacekeeping mission. Force Commander Major General Michael Lollisgaard. We're trying to grab the terrorists, we're trying to get to them before they're getting to us. And of course, by being more proactive, we're also taking more risk. The International Criminal Court, or ICC, has sentenced a former Malian fighter to nine years in prison for destroying historic shrines in Timbuktu. For the first time, cultural destruction was considered a war crime. Meanwhile, support for the ICC started to crumble. Some member states decided to pull out, accusing the court of bias against Africa. Seismic proof for two more nuclear tests conducted by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea this year. In New York, the UN Security Council unanimously voted to impose tougher sanctions on North Korea. US Ambassador Samantha Power. The door remains open for the DPRK to choose a different path, to choose the path of negotiations toward complete, verifiable and irreversible denuclearization. In Myanmar, the army has been accused of large-scale violence against members of the Muslim Rohingya minority. With a humanitarian crisis looming, 20,000 people fled to neighboring Bangladesh. The UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Myanmar, Yang He Lee. There are more than a million Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, deprived of some of their most fundamental rights. 
This is a million too many. Chance for peace in Colombia. After 50 years of conflict, which left 200,000 people dead and 5 million displaced. Juan Manuel Santos Calderón, president of Colombia. La guerra en Colombia ha terminado. Es la primera vez que se colocan a las víctimas en el centro de la solución del conflicto, sus derechos, sus derechos a la verdad, a la justicia, a la reparación y a la no repetición. A peace agreement between government and revolutionary armed forces, or FARC, was handed over to the Security Council and signed amidst celebration and tears of joy in Cartagena. Viva la paz! Viva la Colombia! In a shocking development days later, Colombians rejected the peace deal in a referendum by the tiniest margin, sending all parties back to the drawing board. Finally, a new agreement was ratified and the hard work of implementation has begun. A UN mission is in place to verify the ceasefire and cessation of hostilities and the laying down of arms, and the rebels can finally leave their hideouts and prepare for a life without guns. New devastation in Haiti. Hurricane Matthew killed 600 people and left parts of the country in ruins once again. Cholera spread rapidly when raw sewage spilled into the floodwaters as the UN rushed in aid teams. In a watershed moment this December, Ban Ki-moon apologized for the UN's role in not stemming the cholera epidemic of 2010. On behalf of the United Nations, I want to say very clearly, we apologize uh, to the Haitian uh, people. We simply did not do enough with regard to the cholera outbreak and its spread in Haiti. We are profoundly sorry for our role. A proposed $400 million plan has two components, improving infrastructure and cholera treatment, as well as support to communities affected by the outbreak. In a year of record heat, member states propelled the Paris Climate Change Agreement into force at record speed. 175 countries signed to keep the global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius, and almost 100 countries, accounting for 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions, ratified the agreement by November. Undaunted by climate change deniers, Ban Ki-moon kept up the pressure and the persuasion to bring the treaty into force. In another historic move, governments and industry represented in the plenary of the UN's aviation agency, ICAO, agreed on a plan to control CO2 emissions from international aviation. Measures include technical improvements and advances in the production and use of sustainable fuels. This summer, the Sustainable Development Goals and their furry panda ambassadors, Chi Chi and Dian Dian, turned one year old. Chi Chi, Dian Dian, in Chinese, means beginning moment on the journey to end poverty and hunger by 2030. Fellow SDG ambassador, Forrest Whitaker. We have set for ourselves 17 ambitious goals. If we are to achieve them, this has to be an international movement, a coming together of people, a rallying around a common cause on a scale that we have never witnessed before in our history. A World Bank study found that because of a combination of economic growth and good social policies, over 70 million people have been lifted out of poverty since 2000. The Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities became a reality 10 years ago and has spurred significant progress in inclusion and empowerment. UN Messenger of Peace and music icon Stevie Wonder. Leaders must lead and citizens must act to eradicate hatred and bigotry of any kind everywhere so that we can be a united people of the world. As the UN mourned a former Secretary General, Boutros Boutros Ghali, and Ban Ki-moon reached his 10th and final year in what some call the most impossible job in the world, 
Member states chose the next Secretary General in the most transparent selection process ever. Candidates presented themselves in televised debates to the world. A moment of unity in the Security Council. All 15 members agreed to propose Antonio Guterres to be the next UN Secretary General. I, Antonio Guterres. In his 10 years as UN High Commissioner for Refugees, he's seen the needs and challenges facing the world. Our duty to the peoples we serve is to work together to move from fear of each other to trust in each other. Trust in the values that bind us and trust in the institutions that serve and protect us.